Good morning, Super Scholars. Today is Monday, November 16th, 2020. <clears throat> and I just noticed a mistake, so I'm going to fix that right now. I left out a zero in the 20. I hope everyone had a great weekend and that you had lots of fun and you are back and ready for a day of learning. Okay, remember, before we can do any lesson, we always have to go over our learning target and success criteria. So today I am learning to determine a lesson within a story. I know I've got it when I can support my claim using key details. So we're going to be finding lessons within a story and then <clears throat> supporting our claim with key details. Before we move on, let's go over some important vocabulary. So the first is author's message. When we listen to the story, we will want to listen to see if the author is giving us a message. Sometimes books or stories teach us a lesson, and sometimes author authors will write a story to help us learn or understand a lesson that can help us in our lives. Lesson or moral of a story. A lesson or moral of a story is what we learn from reading a story. It's a life lesson. And then something specific to the book we're reading today, turnip. A turnip is a vegetable that grows underground. And here's some pictures of turnips. I'm not particularly a big fan of turnips, but <clears throat> if you like turnips, that's great. All right, the first thing you're gonna do for this lesson is listen to about 10 seconds of this song. And while you're listening to this song, you should think about, what is the author trying to tell you? So songs can kind of be similar to text or stories because often authors will have a message in their song trying to teach you something. So what do you think the message of this song is? Listen to about 10 seconds of it. Maybe find a parent or a sibling and tell them what you think the message of this um, song is. After you do that, you're gonna need a piece of paper. You have your piece of paper? Great. Now, can you give me a high five? Do it right on the screen. Give me a high five. Wow, that was a great high five. Now, high five your paper and leave your hand on your paper. You're going to trace your hand on your paper. Make sure it's as neat as possible because we're going to be using this as a graphic organizer. Go ahead, trace your hand on your paper. You can pause the video while you do this. All right, now that you have unpaused your video and you're, you've traced your hand on your paper, let's move on. As we read today, we're going to be using our paper high fives to help us retell the story. So we are creating a summary using just our high five. Isn't that so cool? As we're doing this, we are looking at who the characters are, where and when the setting is, and then what happens in the beginning, the middle, and the end. Before we read, let's talk about what we already know about our story. We are reading The Great Big Turnip. Has anyone, have you read this before? It's okay if you've read it before. I always like going back and rereading books. And do you remember what a turnip is? It's that weird vegetable that grows in the ground. Okay, now, do you think this story is real or imagined? Great Big Turnip. Hmm, we'll have to see if it's real or imagined. As we are reading, we are going to be writing in our graphic organizer. We're gonna write the characters, the setting, the beginning, middle, and end. Our purpose for reading and completing the organizer is to determine the lesson of the story. What do you think the author is trying to teach us? Okay. A great big gigantic turnip. What is the biggest vegetable you've ever seen? How would you pick a giant vegetable? Okay. Are you ready? You are listening for characters, settings, and what happens in the beginning, the middle, and the end. There was once an old man who planted a turnip. He dug a hole deep in the ground and gently placed the tiny seed inside. May the small seed sprout and grow a turnip big enough for my whole family to feast upon, he said as he covered the seed with dirt. Then he gave the plant some water and went home. 
The next day, he returned to the garden. He noticed that the seed had grown. The turnip plant came up to his knees. The old man smiled. He gave it water and sang it his favorite songs. Each day, the turnip grew bigger and bigger. Soon, the plant was higher than the man's waist. Then it came up to his nose. The old man and his family could not believe they had grown such a marvelous plant. To them, it was more wonderful than the prettiest roses in full bloom. Okay, did you hear any characters in this story? I definitely heard a character. Who do you think the character was? Look at the picture, that could help you too. The picture can also help you with the setting. Where are they? Do you think they're at an amusement park? Hmm, I don't see any roller coasters or tons of people around, so maybe not at an amusement park. Where do you think they are? Write it down on your paper. On one of your, it should be on your second finger, the setting, and the characters on your first finger. Let's keep reading. Soon, the turnip was bigger than the man himself. He decided it was time to pull it up. What a splendid stew this beauty will make, he thought. He pulled at the turnip, but it did not come up. So he yanked and tugged and pulled some more, but the turnip did not budge. The man called his wife. Dear wife, please come and assist me in pulling this turnip so that we can make a fine stew. With pleasure, she said, smacking her lips. She held on to her husband as he grabbed the top of the turnip. Together, they pulled and tugged and yanked and pulled some more. But no matter how hard they both tried, they could not pull up the gigantic turnip. Their son came out of the house. My sturdy son called the woman. Please come and help us pull this turnip. I certainly will, said the boy. He held on to his mother, who held on to her husband, and together they pulled and tugged and yanked and pulled some more. But no matter how hard they all tried, they could not pull up like the gigantic turnip. Ooh, sorry, I caught a yawn at the end. They could not pull up the gigantic turnip. Okay, I definitely heard some characters on this page. Who were the characters that we were introduced to on this page? Make sure to write that on your first finger. Also, now that we've read into it a little bit more, what has happened in the story so far? That goes on the finger that says beginning. What happened in the beginning of the story? In the beginning, the farmer planted a turnip. And it grew so big, he had to ask his wife and his son to help him pull it out, but they were not able to. Then the boy saw his sister walking by. Strong sister, please come and help pull, us, pull up this turnip, he cried. So the girl ran over and grasped her, bugger, her brother who held on to his mother, who held on to her husband. And together they pulled and tugged and yanked and pulled some more. No matter how hard they all tried, they could not pull up the gigantic turnip. Then the girl saw her dog near the fence. Powerful pooch, she cried, come and help us pull up. If you don't mind, give me just one second while I plug in my laptop. Perfect. Okay. So the farmer, the wife, and the son tried to pull the turnip and they weren't able to. So they called the girl, the daughter, or the sister. And she wasn't able to help. So then they called the dog. Remember, you should be writing down characters as they're introduced. The girl saw her dog near the fence. Powerful pooch, she cried. Come and help us pull up this turnip. 
The dog ran over and took a hold of the girl's dress, and together everyone pulled and tugged and yanked and pulled some more. But no matter how hard they all tried, they could not pull up the gigantic turnip. Then the dog saw a cat in the tree. Fierce feline, he barked, come and help us pull up this turnip. The cat meowed and ran over and took hold of the dog. Together, everyone pulled and yanked and tugged and pulled some more. Do you think they got it up? They have so many people helping now. Oh, but no matter how hard they all tried, they still could not pull up the gigantic turnip. Okay. So what is happening in the middle? Have you been introduced to any new characters? So far, have they been able to get the turnip out? Let's keep reading. Then the cat spied a little mouse under a cabbage plant. Mighty mouse, come and help us pull up this turnip, the cat meowed. That mouse is not mighty, they all cried. Oh my gosh, that was so mean. And she certainly will not be able to help us pull up this turnip. That was even worse. Do you think they're being fair to that mouse? Why do you think they said the mouse is not mighty? If you're having trouble finding the mouse, he's down here. And in a second, when I move my cam my mouse my mouse away, you'll be able to see him. He's down at the very bottom. What do you think is gonna happen? Look at the picture. They were being so mean to the mouse and said, he's not mighty, there's no way he can help us. <clears throat> Let's keep reading. But the mouse ran over and held on to the cat, and together everyone pulled and tugged and yanked and pulled some more. Then, to everyone's amazement, the turnip flew out of the ground so fast that the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, the dog, the cat, and the mouse all fell backwards, right on top of each other. The man looked at the huge turnip and turned to the others. Please help me eat this gigantic turnip, he cried. So they each held on to a part of the turnip and walked it home. The stew was as delicious as the man said it would be, and they all had three helpings, even the tiny mouse. Hmm, were they able to get that turnip up out of the ground without the mouse? No, they were really struggling. And then the cat said, Mighty Mouse, please help us. And the people said, mm, That mouse is not mighty. There's no way she can help us. But what happened? Yes, she helped them. And she helped them get the turnip out. The tiny mouse, the mighty tiny mouse helped them get the turnip out. Do you think maybe the people will feel maybe kind of bad that they were so mean about the mouse. I know if I said something mean that was not true about someone, I would definitely feel a little guilty. So now that we've read the story, we're going to, one, you should make sure your summary is completed. This last part should go in the end, so the very last finger. And then we're going to talk about what we learned from the story. So what the lesson was. Below, there are three options for what could be a lesson from the story. Which one do you think fits best? Now remember, whichever one you pick, you have to be able to find key details to support your answer. So do you think the lesson is one, always ask for help when you need it. Two, never judge someone based on how they look. Or three, hard work will be rewarded. Which one do you think best fits our story? Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to complete this sentence, these two sentences. A lesson of this story is, and then fill in whichever one you think fits best. And then I know this because 
What happened in the story that makes you think that lesson fits the story the best? All right, super scholars, make sure for your independent work, you turn in a picture of your summary. So your paper high five and you um, finish these two sentence starters. Thank you so much for learning with me today. I can't wait to see your all's work.